In my past two collaborations with the classroom at More Perfect Union, we exposed how disastrous the GOP's most high-profile Senate candidates would be for working people. But some of the most dangerous candidates are flying a bit beneath the radar, like North Carolina congressman and best friend of the big banks, Senate candidate Ted Budd, who almost seems like he wants to be boring. Mark, I am doing great. I'm going to start calling in just for you to put me on hold so I can listen to your on-hold music. It's the best. <laughs> No one really knows who this guy is, but he wants us to picture him in a very specific way. I'm Ted Budd, and I'm a small businessman. I'm a small businessman. Small businessman. I'm a small business person. The classroom team at More Perfect Union looked at his record, and what they found is clear. Budd isn't allied with small business owners, farmers, and working people, but rather big banks and billionaires, and he brags about it. At every step of his career, Ted Budd has hurt working people. And it's not just your average corporate Republican stuff. It's worse, and there's data to prove it. So let's dig in in my latest collab with More Perfect Union's The Classroom. Don't forget to subscribe to them as well. One of Ted Budd's biggest selling points is made clear on his website. Ted grew up on a cattle and commercial chicken farm. His parents were small business owners. But even those basic facts are deceitful. The Bud family business is the enormous Bud Group, which today employs over 5,000 people. It's a janitorial maintenance and landscaping staffing company. They hire workers in those fields, then get contracts with schools, offices, hospitals, and other facilities, and send those workers there. The company is private, so we don't have access to their financials, but some sources suggest revenues from $150 to $500 million per year. Which brings us back to Bud's official biography. From an early age, Ted learned that hard work, family, and faith are the building blocks to success. Hard work, not so much, but family, definitely. When Bud finished his master's degree in business at Wake Forest University, an elite private school, he was immediately offered a job as vice president at that family company. Bud acts like his working experience gives him empathy for working North Carolinians, but a look at the Bud Group's business model shows anything but. When the Bud Group takes over maintenance or custodial work from an organization, they often pay the workers less than they were making when they worked directly for that organization. That includes workers who were fired for the Bud Group to take over and then rehired with a worse contract. This has been documented at schools like Bud's own alma mater, Wake Forest. Students there successfully got the school to agree to pay all staff a living wage, but the Bud Group found a loophole. If the Bud Group is the employer, they could pay less. According to Wake Forest Student Journalism, a 2022 Bud Group job listing for a Wake Forest position pays $10.50, well below the living wage of $15.95 for one adult with no children. A similar situation happened at the Rock Hill Public School District in South Carolina in 2012. Custodial staff were told they no longer had summer work, it had been contracted out by the Bud Group, but they were welcome to work for Bud at $7.25 an hour. The school paid $12.50 an hour. Today, the Bud Group lists school custodian jobs in the ballpark of $8 to $10 an hour. Ted Budd was not at the Bud Group during these two examples, but he worked there prior when the precedent was set. He is still financially connected to the company, and he did have a leadership role for years. So let's look at what he did do through what he brags about on his LinkedIn. I'll translate from manager speak to worker speak. Designed and co-led company-wide reorganization leading to largest revenue growth in 40 years. That's how Bud types describe layoffs. Led diverse team in Florida to reduce workers' comp claims. I barely need to translate that one. Ted helped the Bud Group steal money from workers injured on the job. But at least it was a diverse team. Implemented a company-wide electronic timekeeping system that lowered labor costs over $1 million. That means introducing a tool that makes wage theft easier. Lowered labor costs just means taking that out of the pockets of workers. And of course, wrote current mission statement, which is the ultimate blow-off job a dad would give his fail son working for his giant corporation. What are you in for? Uh, me? Just running some numbers with Jerry. Good kid. But isn't this guy supposed to be a farmer? Bud did grow up on a farm, and he still lives on the family farm today. Nice thing to get for free from your family. But he really isn't a friend of farmers. In the late 90s, Bud's family owned an agricultural company that was struggling financially. So the Buds loaned that company $10 million out of their massive familial wealth. But the company also stopped paying small farmers they were indebted to. Eventually, the company paid the Buds back, but not the farmers. The company went bankrupt, leaving the farmers $50 million poorer. Later, Ted bought Pro Shots, a North Carolina gun store and range. This is the company that Bud bandies about the most in trying to get small businessman cred. That cred spurred him to run for Congress in 2016. In the primary, he got a big boost from the Club for Growth, a massive pro-billionaire, anti-worker super PAC focused on destructive policy like eliminating capital gains and corporate income taxes, killing federal public education, and taking away Social Security and Medicare. 
More Perfect Union, in partnership with Sludge, did some great work on Club for Growth's influence in the 2022 election and their dangerous agenda. You gotta check it out. Their investment in Bud in 2016 worked out. He won his primary and the general election. And they got what they paid for. Bud played his role as billionaire lackey brilliantly. As soon as he got to Washington, Bud introduced the National Paycheck Protection Act, which stifled labor unions' power to advocate for their members. Bud voted to block an increase in the minimum wage, citing his experience as a business owner. Because of course, a business owner wants to pay people less. Bud is the bank's candidate, and in office he would work to help them even more than he already has. He has also voted against giving consumers more access to their credit scores, neutered working people's rights to file class action lawsuits against banks and credit card companies, and voted against financial support for Americans during the last government shutdown. He even weirdly posted an article on his own website with the headline, Freshman Republican Ted Budd gets bank support for fight with retailers. Yeah, that's Ted Budd bragging about being friends with big banks. And many of Bud's votes align perfectly with big donations. In 2019, Bud voted against lowering drug prices the same week that he got donations from Pfizer and GlaxoSmithKline. And this year he voted against the bill preventing big oil from price gouging you at the pump one day after he got a campaign donation from an oil company. The AFL-CIO broke it down by the numbers. During his time in Congress, Bud voted in working people's interests just 8% of the time. In 2021, he scored a zero, far below even the rest of his generally anti-worker party. And he betrayed the farming community that he relentlessly claims to be a part of. In 2018, Bud voted no on an important bill for America's farmers. Agriculture is North Carolina's most important industry because the bill gave too much food assistance to working families. When the language around food assistance was removed, Bud voted in favor. Bud also voted against federal funding for broadband internet across rural areas, even though 30% of North Carolina homes lack reliable high-speed internet. The bill Bud voted no on passed anyway and provided tens of millions of dollars in funding to his own district. That's money he didn't want them to have. Of course, Bud took thousands of dollars in donations from the telecom industry. So knowing that Bud is so easy to buy, we should look at who is donating to the Senate campaign to see what kind of senator he would be. Like this huge donation from the CEO of Old Dominion Freight Line, a trucking company. In their most recent earnings call, they said major risks to their profits are unionization or the passage of legislation or regulations that could facilitate unionization of our employees. Meaning, Bud has motivation to pass anti-union legislation. We already told you how friendly Bud is with the banks, and now he's one of the only candidates endorsed by Friends of Traditional Banking, a super PAC that fights for the interests of the financial service industry. One of their main goals is gutting the Dodd-Frank Act an important piece of legislation that regulates banks to protect working people. The super PAC specifically targets the Volcker Rule that prevents banks from the types of dangerous speculation that caused the 2008 financial collapse. They want to support candidates like Ted Budd that will sacrifice working people to make banks more money. And Bud's Senate campaign received huge checks from his old friends from 2016, the Club for Growth. The prolific super PAC is throwing almost their entire weight behind Bud this year. As More Perfect Union reported in their great piece on the organization, no candidate has benefited more this cycle from the Club for Growth than Bud. The pro-billionaire group knows he's a good investment for them. But some of Bud's biggest donors? Bud himself. Top donors have names as varied as Ted Bud, Theodore Bud, and Mr. Theodore Bud. Now, I'm not saying that they're all the same person, but yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. And those donations make sense because Ted or Theodore or Ted S has a net worth of over $11 million. Bud is the exact type of elite that he fights for in Washington. So when Bud says, As your next U.S. Senator, I will always vote to make life better for you and your families. He isn't talking to working North Carolina families. He's talking to bankers' families, billionaires' families, bosses' families, and of course, the Bud family. Thank you for watching my latest collaboration with The Classroom at More Perfect Union. Don't forget to go to their page and subscribe to their channel as well. The link is right here on the screen and it only takes a second. As these incredibly important midterm elections approach, it's more important than ever to stay informed about how these candidates could affect your life. So also don't forget to check out our previous collaborations on Ohio Senate candidate J.D. Vance and Pennsylvania's Mehmet Oz.